stories, one a flood story, one will be a new kitchen, living room, dining room. We're going to put in a master bedroom for us with a bathroom. And we're going to add an additional bathroom upstairs. So right now the house only has one bathroom and three bedrooms, a den, a kitchen, and a dining room. We're going to add the upstairs. The existing house is going to pretty much stay intact. The kitchen is going to be converted to a den, so we're going to get rid of the stove and the refrigerator and the dishwasher. And it's, I'm going to, I call it a craft room for the kids because we're going to leave the sink so you can wash the paintbrushes out and whatever. So I hired Morgan Engineering to um, put together a plan to see what we need for variances and whatnot. And they came back and said that I didn't need any variance, um, but there's I failed on the pre-existing condition on the 25-foot corner lot. So I have 25-foot on Sanborn Avenue, but I only have 19.2 on Chicago. So if, if, if Chicago, we're, we're right at the end almost to Broadway, so we're right next to On Point Auto, if you're familiar with that. <coughs> so basically, we're keeping the same shell, but just lifting it. <coughs> So I'm just going to clarify one thing. You said form, and then you said show. You're keeping it in the same footprint as what you need, right? Exactly. So you're not expanding it. In. You're, you're lifting it, and it's staying within the dimensions that it currently is, yes. but you're adding the floor on. Right, and that floor is going to be 952 square feet of living area. I'm sorry, Mr. Arnold. Did you have a you question? Asked. Oh, <laughs> you were thinking the same thing. Yeah, so the existing dwelling violates the front yard setback as it currently exists, and the dwellings being elevated and then expanded as well, expanded vertically. So, <coughs> so if consequently, just, just being elevated, he'd be allowed because he has the right to elevate. That's correct. But since we're putting a second floor on it, we're making Ag that condition worse. Aggravating that nonconformity right. requires and that's variance what we're here relief. For, but we're here on a corner lot. Anybody have any other questions or anything? Just one. How many cars are going to fit in the driveway? Well, right now it's, it's a two-car driveway. The garage, there's no room for any cars. So once we do this, we'll have room. So we'll, ha we'll have at least three cars parked. So you're adding space for parking? No, uh, we'll be cleaning out the garage for parking. You're making more room for parking. <laughs> yes. uh, okay. I have a question. The existing detached garage that's on site, that's not being changed at all, no. right? No. Um, we're, we're, we decided that we were going to lift the house as opposed to demolishing the house and starting from scratch. Because if we lifted the house, it's in great shape. And, you know, you, you talk about you know, being green and whatnot. You know, I throw it in the dumpster. So that's basically what we're trying to do. Right. You, you're not going over on pipe? The only thing we're here no, for is we're under, right? an existing condition. Yes, it's an existing condition. Okay. Ray, what's seven about the roof pitches that you want to acquire for the kitchen on? Well, the roof is existing. That's going up. I think that's pretty scary. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the ordinance does require a, a six on 12 roof pitch minimum. In this case, the first floor is now turning into the upper story and they're building a first floor underneath and building a non-habitable story and then a first story. So so the roof pitch is existing. The intent is to keep the roof that's there. Yes, absolutely. And it looks like they're good on impervious and building coverage. Right? That is they're correct. Well below. Okay. Anyone in the audience have any questions of the applicant? Anyone in the audience have any comments on this? 
was down there today, and this is a pretty standard situation on some of those homes down there, they, and all, all over town, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you're down. And, uh, you've, you've done your oh, part. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing our thing. It looks to it looks to me that uh, you, you're uh, a little bit cautious, which is good, and, and making the changes that you're making. I think you'll be very happy with it. I appreciate you coming to the hearing, going through all of the paperwork and so on to get it done. But uh, thank you. Yeah, this is an easy one, finally. we got an easy one. Um, <laughs> the side yard setbacks are what they are being now you're on the corner. You're not uh, making them any worse. You're keeping them the same. Uh, you're going to get a flood compliant house, which is always uh, positive for the town. Obviously, you're going to need the room with the expanded grandkids and that. And uh, it looks like a good project from what I can see. Not much else to say. It's a hardship that it's a corner lot. Um, I think we're going to try this year to get corner lots to get the ordinance changed so that it's a little easier on us. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with this. Mr. Driver? I don't have a problem either, but I'd like you to come over and clean my garage when you get done with yours. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Mr. McGee? Yeah, no problem here. I think it's, uh, you know, here we're at 12 years after Sandy and the old houses are being raised, and I think that's a good thing because it's indicative of people. I hope moving into town full time, and, and that's a that's an important thing for me. Uh, I have no problem with this whatsoever. Well, at this point, pretty much everything's been said, but um, I consider this a no-brainer um, for approval. Um, you know, you have a couple of pre-existing variances and no new ones, um, and it's an improvement. Get a motion. I have nothing further to add. Get a motion and close deliberations. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, there was no conditions, no nothing, right? Uh, get a motion to approve the application. So oh, move. Second. Motion by Mr. Kelly, second by Mr. Dixon, to approve 2024-14 of John Carroll Szynski at 219 Sanborn. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Dixon. Yes. Vice Chair Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Driver. Yes. Mr. McGain. Yes. Ms. McFadden. Yes. Chairman Strunches. Yes. Application approved. Easy peasy. Thank you. You're welcome, John. Thank you. Nice, nice Thank meeting you, Carol. Same thing goes to who's going to talk, get sworn yes, in. If you both want to talk, you both get sworn in. If not, sir. Sure.
2017, we brought the, uh, uh, Sarah Boyd house down there, and uh, it was it, it was in dis disrepair, uh, which was a bungalow. It was a uh, you know obviously just right on the ground, and we built the house, you know, elevated and uh, certainly improved the property. Um, it's an A9. So it's, it is it in is the flood, in zone. flood zone. Right, right. right across from the D. Yep. And unlike certain situations, right, this isn't a grandfathered in, I see from your note. Now, the, uh, the ordinance that um, amended pavers to be impervious was in effect prior to uh, the applicant installing the pool and. Um, the pool did have a zoning permit and building permit, and there was a very limited amount of pavers shown around the pool. Those limited amount of pavers brought the total impervious coverage up to near 50% but below, so it was permitted by right. And then, um, as you can see, the patio got a lot bigger. After, after the permit. That's and correct. I'm assuming after inspection. Yeah. Everything was inspected. Yeah, all the mechanicals were inspected. Everything was set. But we had no idea that there was. Okay, to such yeah, a Yeah, he literally just abandoned us. Like Paul we just said, the inspection is the reason for the. Right. Okay. So I just want to be clear. Mm -hmm. the, the permits were issued based on the the drawings, and these are, this is square footage that people were going to have. And then after the permits were issued and the, and the mechanicals were inspected and all that kind of stuff, you were offered new papers. And no, those went not exactly, exactly. No. no. He just kind of put everything in and then never came back. Okay. Never hooked the pool up, never put the heater, never did anything. Well, he came back for months. And we didn't pay him, and he still never came back. And then he called uh, all the contractors, got all that done, and we looked at the township on what we needed to do because we had no idea at that point. And um, they kind of walked us through it, said, all right, you need this inspection, this is what you need to do, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So we did all that. And then they came back and said, oh, you have way too much. Um, but we didn't even know what we were supposed to have. We just literally left us. Right. But the part I get confused at is there was there was drawings done that showed a certain amount of papers around the pool, right? Yes, sir. And then you look down on the ground, and it's not matching. That's how you Correct. know. That's what, well, well, that's the thing. I didn't know that he didn't come downtown to uh, apply for it. Adding more papers, and, you know. I think you would assume he said want more papers, and we said we came home from work. You know, yeah, we came home from work. It was done, and then that was yeah. it. <laughs> and he never ever came back. And we do realize that it's a drainage issue. We do have a larger recharge system in that's already put in that we had to put in when we moved. Yeah, but the, the issue is getting that water from an impervious area into the recharge system, especially close, so close to the water. It's the it's a runoff issue. Yes. So, so yeah, we're in a situation where the entire house has a recharge system for its footprint, and it's actually five percent larger than it needs to be. Um, and uh, so, as far as any additional runoff that's there, I spoke to a gentleman here, Mr. Mealy, about a recharge system, and uh, we had a discussion. He had some suggestions as to what we should do. When I looked at that, um, it's, I, I went and I got a price out. It's a fifteen thousand dollar recharge system that needs to be installed. But I also <coughs> feel like it's over engineered by like by three times. I mean, the recharge system for the additional pavers, the fifteen percent overage, what we designed was more than the entire house needed. So. That's our situation right now. Right. Great. What's the uh, square footage of overage? Uh, so, uh, 6250. No, I, I see the percentage. I'll say, uh, what is the actual when, when did this, uh, square uh, footage? Come to your That's attention. That's where the mask oh. oh. When did this <laughs> situation come to your attention? When we came up for the uh, final CM. For your, for your
your final? Yeah, for the final skip. Once all the uh, everything, the electric plumbing, all that was inspected and approved. Yep. And that came from a building inspector, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like just uh, slightly north of 953 square feet. One other thing, right? Uh, the payers that are there right now, they don't meet the standards that's required either, right? They the don't line. meet the permeable paver right. requirement. So no. we, we're over and it doesn't meet the, the permeable kind. At this yeah, so they time. count essentially as 100%. Right. And then just as far as the inspections, obviously if you're the electrical inspector, you're just yeah, looking at the electrics, yeah, right. right? So you, you don't care about the pavers or the water or anything else. So. Trying to see like the dimension of the papers. The problem that is on paper here, which is really an issue, is the papers go right up to your fence line, right? Well, and not exactly. Well, well, well I'm, I'm looking at the drawing. It <laughs> might be a right, right. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Uh, basically, sure. it's it does it does go quite far, but uh, between the fence and the rocks that we actually have pressure. Tr treated two by 12 wood, and then sand, and then stone all the way around the yard. Uh, and, uh, I believe it's four feet in the back from the fence to the fingers, uh, and then on each side of it, it's, a, it's about a foot. Yeah, that's right up to is yeah, the foot that yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of more feet in the backyard, so yeah. it's just in a flood zone. What about any way of uh, removing some of it to get a little closer to the 50%? Well, we're at 65, which is way, way over. Well, I, I do have a couple of questions about it. Like, uh, certain things that were categorized as impermeable, such as you know the front steps that we have, you can stand on the and get soaked in the rain, and it's dripping right down to a permeable surface. In the yard, there's a patio that's back there. Same thing, you stand under it, it drips right down to a permeable sur uh, surface. Same with the steps on that side. And in, in addition to that, any overflow into the pool, we pump into the recharge system because it's oversized for the house. So we're, we're absorbing a lot you know, in that respect. I understand that might not get us to 50%, but I don't believe it's 65%. That's the man you have to convince. Well, <laughs> so, well yes, 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 that's for sure. So, so I would say that you go by what, what the ordinance says. So the ordinance says that your pool counts as 50% impervious. That's how we calculate it. If the pavers aren't installed with a recharge system underneath, then they're counted as 100%. Um, as far as the steps, uh, the ordinance does allow that if the steps are open and open to permeable surfaces below, then you get to cut the stair area in half. So, what are we looking at? We're looking at, you know, two percent. You know. So I, I mean, I think there's, as the chairman expressed, the concern for, you know, the, the total impervious coverage, as well as it appears that um, the yard's been elevated. So the effect on the adjoining neighbors, as far as where the runoff goes, will probably goes on to the adjoining properties. So it's, it's certainly is a concern, which is no doubt why the borough engineer flagged it during his final inspection. Yeah, I don't know. does anybody else have any questions? I got no questions. No. Now, just back to the question, have you, if you got bad news, have you thought of a way to possibly remove something, like in the corner, in the rear, most rear part of the yard, the corners are pretty big. You ever think about Cutting them across? In order, two things. One is, if it would be allowed, we would put a recharge system in the back of the yard where that four foot span is. We've actually designed something that would gather enough cubic square feet of water to, to bring us safely back into that 50% uh, range. That would be the least detrimental to the way that the yard is designed. Otherwise, the amount that we would have to remove to get to 50% uh, is basically everything from the house to the pool on both sides of that um, concrete patio that's in the middle. It would be all of it, pretty much. Uh, it's all got to go. Yeah, there's two different types. One is a concrete slab that's, that's there. The that's center. why it was so uneven and, and just not safe. That's why we put the papers around it. So the inside is a concrete patio. And so uh, 
Um, but what you're describing is, you know, about all this, but what about the original drawing when the, pr the pool was approved in 2021? Oh, I understand that there was less there because we had designed what we had designed. Right. And then when our contractor, our favorite contractor... No, I, I heard that part of the story, but what about that drawing? What was, why was that not functional for you and now you had to put all these more papers in? That's it, what it was. It was just he said, oh, we're going to put some more papers down and we said, okay, came home from work, that's what it was. We thought, and then he literally left. We thought it was going to be a situation where it would make the yard safer because it wasn't a large was a like off. dance floor and then a foot down all the way around. And it made sense and, and you know, it convinced us of how beautiful it would be and this and that. And so we were like, oh sure, because honestly, we had no idea that there was a coverage issue. You didn't know about the 50%? Not at all. Cut so off. The, the, no, initial, the initial plans were for either side of that stamp concrete patio to be pervious, whether it's gravel or, or grass or whatever. Is that what the original plan said? No, because there was little lights that were going to put around it. So, so what I'm trying to figure out is what did the original plan look like? The original plan was basically the swimming pool. I think it was about three feet of concrete poured all the way around it. Okay, maybe there was a few, maybe it was maybe it's five feet on each end, but it wasn't a lot more. So what I'm asking is the original plan with the original papers, what was different about that than what we're looking at now? Where did the additional papers go? Did, did they go on the outside? Were there six courses that are around, around the perimeter of the yard? Were they added next to the stamp concrete patio? There like, were, there where, were did papers, those, where did those new papers that he offered you go? They went basically, uh, if, if in the center of the backyard, there's that uh, stamped concrete. Mm -hmm. It was to the left and to the right. and they were, that, was that was pretty much what was added on. Well, what was shown on the approved plan, which I was, I was just trying to find because I looked at it earlier, is you have that stamped concrete patio already in the backyard. <laughs> then there was the pool, and then there was there was two areas of pavers on either end of the pool. There was nothing behind the pool because that that brought it right to the fifty percent mark. So. There was no possibility of installing additional pavers unless unless they came for relief to the board. Right, which could have had a logic to it that you want to be able to walk around your pool on more than grass. But this is the entire backyard is pavers, which I think that's I, I, I don't know how he got that over on you guys. To be well, honest, we like never you. Have known. I mean, the entire front yard and side yards are all rock. Like our lawn and lower Yeah, no, I, 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 I get it. So it's just about like about half you yard. went to work one day and came home and the yard was filled with about 50% of the yard before the pavers was gravel. Right. Now the back, yeah. the back end visit. And the honestly, end of honestly it, it, we didn't give it much thought. We, I mean, just logic to us was the entire footprint of the house runs into a recharge system. Both sides in the front of the house were all permeable. And who would really mind if we had some extra papers in the yard so that we would have a level surface? <coughs> but it, it wasn't even a thought that we were doing something that we were exceeding what we were allowed. Because we had no idea. We had oh, I, I believe you. Yeah. I have one more question. Yes, um, it looks to me as though the gutters run down into a drain pipe into pop ups. That pop up into that, the that's the recharge system for the house, yes. Recharge, it's popping up and flowing on top of the patio, correct? Never. Oh. And then why would we call it pop up? Am I yeah, yeah, I think what, what I'm thinking of the same thing you are. It's like the, looks like that's the, for the gutters. runoff from the gutters, yeah. which goes yeah, directly into a pipe. So it's tough for the runoff from the papers to get into that recharge system when the PVC is elevated into that downspout. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Right, so that water that we're worried about can't get down into that recharge system. Okay. It can't. So that Unless we get a really bad flood. Right. Which we have. Thank you, Ms. Dan. So would that be something that we could do where we could pitch that to, uh, to get those in as drains as opposed to pop-ups? No, I, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. I, either way, could we consider a recharge system in the back four feet that we can install? <coughs> I think Mr. Point? Dixon's question is the most...
pressing right now. What are you willing to do to get this, this down considerably more towards what was the approved drawing? Because right now it's just it's way too much in a flood area that goes right up against both neighboring properties. And again, this is whether you, you're nice people, you live here, whatever. Rental doesn't matter. Living at home doesn't matter. It's the property. That's what we come down to. You guys can sell the property two weeks from now, and we're, that's what we're thinking about, is how this will run with the land forever, not who you are. That doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, we're all looking at this, and it looks very nice. It's pretty. It's clean. It's neat. But we can't let someone pave the whole backyard. Okay, so can <laughs> we do permeable pavers in up to a point where we can get that back? So certainly, if you took the pavers out and put in permeable pavers, then it's likely with the extent of the improvements, you might meet the ordinance requirements at that point. I, I don't know, but so the other I don't know the extent of the pavers, you know, in total. So what I'm, what I'm hearing is that we need to we need to remove those pavers, and there's no room for a recharge system to catch water that is going to run out. Then back me up if you can or if not. We're here to hear of this case. We're not here to engineer, not I here to that. design. We really shouldn't even give suggestions. We should hear your story, your case, and, and, and vote deliberate and vote on it. I understand. And then if we vote in favor, go on your merry way. If we vote against, then you can apply to the town to switch out in favors to permits. That, that was a correct statement. <laughs> Although there's always a little room for uh, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. not going to get anywhere sitting there. Yeah, no, you, 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 you're not going to design a, a whole project. I'll, I'll only say that there's also the room that we work with people all the time yeah. in the sense that, right. and Karen, take it easy, it may be a short period, but they can go away and come back quickly <laughs> with something that's going to be that's something they want to propose to us because this ain't flying and I think that's the key and I don't know that we want to go through any type of res judicata type thing or where they're reapplying for something similar. It's this case is open right now. I wouldn't I would offer them if like I don't how can they even begin to tell us what this recharge would be from an engineering perspective? They can't, right? It, like when we get recharge systems but we're not I know, but you, need, you would have to have an engineer here with you that has one of your witnesses who would be presenting that to us from a professional point of view and all that kind of thing. And we make sure that those people have the proper credentials and all that happens. It's just, you don't... So what I'm offering is, and again, the board could disagree with me, I'm saying come back in at the beginning of a meeting quickly and spend 15 minutes with us and come back with what you want to really, knowing that we're not liking this and just getting told no and then having to figure it out, I'm saying potentially you're hearing where the board's at. Yes. You know you had approved. There could be some level of light leniency, right, or whatever. So what would you come back with that would say, here's a recharge system, here's a reduction in the pavers, here's where you are. Here we're at 54% and things, you know, we're presenting it to you. And I, I don't know if that's the number the board may say no still, but what I'm saying is this isn't going to work. That's clear from what I'm hearing from the people that I know who sit up here. So I, I'm, again, could that be a true statement <laughs> as well? That's a true statement, although that, that uh, eventually the applicant has to make that choice as yes. to whether he is going to ask for a vote tonight or ask for an adjournment would you to modify to? the plan. I would ask for an adjournment, please. Yeah. That's a smart move. She loves that, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, coming out. <laughs> Since we're booking for August. Yeah, yeah we're not going to be booking for August on this one. I know. I'm looking. We're adding it to any upcoming quick meeting. Well, how quick are you going to do your adjustments? Yeah, you're going to have to uh, figure it out. React. Yeah, yes. Well, we have the April 4th special meeting with the Gottlieb. If they're going to come back with a plan, you might as well do it just before that real yep, quick. On April work. 4th. Can you get done quickly? Motion by Vice 
Chair Reynolds no. and several <coughs> members of Dixon to carry application 2024-02 of Gregory and Carrie Kubinak, Mill Pond, New York Avenue, to April 4th, 2024, without notice. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Vice Chair Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Driver? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mr. McFadden? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Application carried. So you, you, I just want to make sure you're walking away clearly, right? That you're amending the plan to try to come in with your best case of what you want to present to the board. And I need it a week before this meeting, so Ray can review it. We need it in a week. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Thanks.
so whether my lot's too big, I have more than 10,000 square foot of my lot, I'm 50 by 206. There's nothing else in my backyard. I stayed in my footprint when I built my house because I didn't want to take up my backyard. Uh, it's all the way in the back of my yard. Behind me is a commercial parking lot. The side of me is, is commercial uh, buildings.
I, I can find the orders, perhaps. Uh, you know, I, I don't see anything more. It's sheds were very defined, square foot X, you know, setbacks. Garage, it just says uh, not more than more, uh, not more than three motor vehicles. I think so. I think it's 24 by 24. I say that because I built it. Again, I have a quick question for you. The hang up here, from what I see, is you're calling it a shed, and it, that it's too too big, too tall. If you just made it a garage, and maybe made it a little bit bigger, where you could put a car in there, you wouldn't even be here. That's what I'm getting at. That's that was that was part of the discussion as well. I mean, just make it a garage. That's the L section. And part of that, you could have a little clubhouse outside. That's Nobody would know. All right, sounds good. I'll just add the L section on there. I'll just get my permission. No, I don't think that's what he's saying. Well, that's what some of the discussion was. I yeah, that's, that's, that's not what he's saying. He's just saying, yeah. he's just saying if you just, just built it bigger, you wouldn't be here. Right. And they said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make it bigger. I like my big yard. I'm not trying to make it bigger. Something that was just set up because I had extra, I had the extra lumber in my backyard from when I, when I built my house. That's how this evolved. Um, so I don't necessarily want to have to make it bigger. When they said, well, it has to be a garage, and then we don't have to come before the board or anything to make it a garage, that's the L section that I added. When I added that L section, they told me that I can't incorporate what I have there already. And, and a clubhouse and a together. Secondary structure. And, and so I think applicant <laughs> is basically saying that. that, right. that so that's why he's, he's also said, agreeing with that. So right. he's saying, I don't need the garage. I just need this one right. structure. And the one structure is different than what we normally would consider as it's not a garage and it's not a shed. So we got to decide if oh. that uh, fits into the zone and whether it's a negative thing to uh, the zone. Several years ago, to be a clubhouse. Go ahead, Mr. Kelly. Several years ago, we had one of our uh, uh, 
people here in the main office come before us and wanted to build a second shed and had to get a variance for a second shed. And that was to keep the two sheds within the category shed. Now, she came for a variance for that. Now, we're looking at this, I assume, that this is a shed that I see here. Yes. So this is a shed. This, this doesn't qualify as a shed. It's much too large, isn't it? That's the variance. That's what they yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. Do. So, yes. so too, therefore, too big for a shed and too small for a garage. We can't have. We can have a shed and a. And we can. We can. We're going to. I think, from what he's putting forward, we're going to vote on whether we feel that that structure, as an oversized shed, is going to yeah. pass in this zone or not. I think that's an where we're at. Shed or there's an much more garage to it. One of the two, I guess. I'm, I'm kind of happy that you're abandoning the garage portion because I never would have been able to vote on what I have in front of me. There's just not enough from a drawings perspective of that, at least. The other thing has a little perspective and some measurements to it. I mean, it's not the greatest set of prints I've seen before. Yeah, but no, I, I, yeah. this no, no, this no, part no. didn't have no, anything no, to even look at. Yeah. So I would have never have gone forward on trying to figure out what that was from that drawing. But we don't have to because we only have to deal with the 14 foot 4 inch by 22 foot 3 inch by 12 foot high shed clubhouse is it 12 it's playboy is it 12 foot or 12 foot 10 inches 12 foot 10 inches 12 foot 10 inches my eyes i didn't see it i had my glasses but off because that's is that's a variance right? that's yeah, yeah it's all, all the whole saw every dimension of the shed of the playhouse shed thingy needs you're, you're not planning on running any gas electric water there's no what kind of footing does this? Sorry, Paul. What kind of what kind of footing does this building have? And is there a concrete well, pad? Or? No, there's no concrete pad. That was another thing that was thrown out in the cyberspace. Uh, that I poured concrete back there. And, no. uh, when I set it all up, there's footings underneath it. I was told it's a dust pass. Obviously, building department or whatever else is going to have to come out there and start inspecting everything. So whatever footings that they want me to comply with. Can I just ask you a question? I'm not sure if I'm for or against yet, and I'm still listening to figure out. When you say no electric, don't you want to be able to flick a light on in the thing? I do not. So, like, yeah, I can understand no plumbing. There's ways we don't allow heat, we don't whatever. Like, you said your kids are getting a little older. They're going to say, Dad, we want to go out back. It truly was never designed a light. to take the shape of that it has to take the shape of Are they going to sit out there by candles? <laughs> Lights come on, my kids are coming out. That's the uh, old school rules. So. Got it. <laughs> All right. Yes, so one more question. Um, the property to the right of your yard, there's an accessory building behind that. It goes all the way backward, the same distance as where you want to put your shed. So if I'm looking at the back of the house? Yeah, if you're looking at your shit, if you're at the back of your house and you're looking towards the parking lot, this picture shows if you're looking the towards the parking lot, your prop the property right next door, what's that building in the back that, to the right? Right here. Oh, that's a, that's a, uh, which one? Right here. That's a, that's the house on uh, near the lot. Right, right, that's all the way, all the way to the, back. the back. Okay. That actually used to be a garage from what I was told many, many years ago. Well, it's a flag lock, so there's two houses on the lot. Ah, uh, okay. They're both rentals. Who owns the fence? That fence. It looks like it covers three, three lots. So that fence runs along the whole back of the parking lot, right? Back of the parking lot, right? Yeah. yeah. That fence runs from, um, I guess, uh, Maletto's. It's not there anymore, but basically from the back side of Maletto's. Back. 
else have any questions about the budget? Yeah, my budget. Uh, are, uh, are we getting, are we settling in on the one building? Is yes. That, that's what we're out. Okay. Yes. I just yeah, thought yeah, I, I have to tell my wife I have to build two separate structures, she's probably going to do it. Yeah, because I'd yeah. like to see that the one building. The building that's partially there. Yeah. Okay. Frame. Right. Is the right. one we're talking about, and that's it. That other no, thing on the plan that. view is gone. Will we, will we see that tonight? That's one building, or are we, are we going to get it again to see the building? Uh, well, uh, the I, way it's going to look. I think, I don't based know on the testimony, that another meeting and another. No. 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 We have what we're going to see. I think, though. Uh, so this is a thing that I want to hear from you guys. Are we Just, are, if if this going? was going to be an approved oversized shed, and you're allowed to have a shed in a garage, could you just come back and build a garage now without coming because we approved it as an oversized shed? No, or, with restrictions. Hold on. I'm at, let me just look at the answer from the professionals. The shed with variances, and then I can build a garage. Right? Yeah. That's what I say. So we would have to condition someone to come back if they wanted to, because we're viewing this as such an oversized structure right now, yeah, beyond right. just a little bit over on a shed. You could place, you you could 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 put place a, condition. a condition there where there would be no additional accessory structures just without a, matter, a return just to the matter board. Of making Not sure that you could never have one, but if you wanted you one, want. you had to come back. And, and that would follow the property, that would follow ownership no matter what. Correct. Okay. In the future, if I do decide to build a garage, that will be Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, I, think we're, we're, I want you to be clear, and this isn't just for you, it's for the property forever. We're saying to the future property owners or whatever that any additional building that's going to be built in that backyard would have to come back before the board. I, I just have a question for the engineer on that. Yes, sir. Because this is between the shed and the garage. It, it's, I know you're saying you want a shed. This drawing and the, the building that he has there, if he says that's a garage, what are we doing here? Well, it's not a garage because it's a garage. Garage. You can't get a car, a car in it. It's not because it doesn't have the a garage. A garage has garage to be door. enough to put a car in. The yeah, way it is, I mean, this and, is a and, and theoretically, you would, theoretically, you'd need a driveway to get there. I mean, right. yeah. I mean yeah. if you look at the uh, thing, his driveway ends at the rear of the house. So, I mean. Mr. Dixon, the biggest thing is it has a plywood floor and it has to have cement to be able to park a oh. car in it. You need to be able to pull a car into it and make it into a garage by parking a car in it. Okay. This is not. This is clubhouse shed thingy building. Anyone else have any questions? No. Anyone in the audience have any questions that they would like to ask the applicant? No. Anyone in the audience have any comments that they would like to make on the case? So, what conditions do we have before we go into? Uh, the two I have uh, are that the uh, garage structure, the 12 by 25 that was shown on the plan initially submitted with the application is being withdrawn and not sought for approval. Uh, and then the second condition is that uh, if approved for the oversized shed 14 4 by 22 3 with a height of 12 feet and, tw and 10 inches. Uh, if approved, no additional accessory structure could be built upon the lot without a return to the board for uh, additional relief. Do you understand those conditions and you're okay with them? Get a motion to close for deliberations, please. So moved. Second. All in favor. Right, Mr. Kelly. So, uh, yeah, the thing that I think maybe get, gets overlooked here is the fact that this is a 200 foot deep lot, correct? Uh, 200 feet is pretty high. And uh, this structure is going to be in the back of that. And therefore, I see somewhat of a relief in the fact that it's larger than a shed. Uh, it's not quite as large as a garage. But it's, uh, so uh, the fact that it's on the back of the property, and uh, I, I, I see it 
reduced to one building, I think we're looking at something that I can be happy with. Thank you. Mr. Dixon. All right. Um, being that he wants to keep it a shed instead of turning it into a garage, um, it's two feet ten inches taller than what a shed would be. But it's also almost twice the size. Quite, uh, quite, uh, size. But like Mr. Kelly said, he's got a 200 uh, square foot, and a lot goes back 200 something feet. It backs up against a commercial. It's not backing up against another. Uh, SF5 type house is back up to a commercial zone and a parking lot. So it's not going to uh, affect any properties behind it. So as of right now, um, I'd like to hear what everyone else has to say about it. Mr. Reynolds. All right. Well, first off, we're not big on forgiveness. <laughs> it happens and probably too happen often. Um, this lot is where the size. Not, uh, not oversized, but it's a large lot. Uh, the shed is going to be raised on pilings that appears, allowing flow underneath it. If, if that was a problem, we're so far under on building coverage and impervious coverage that, given the size of the lot and, and all that is just stated, I, I'm thinking it's not a bad idea. As when Mr. Reynolds makes the statement, we're not big on forgiveness, just so everyone understands what the board does when someone comes in with something that's already started before we had a chance to comment on it, is we still view that case as if it was from the beginning. So we're still judging it as nothing happened. We're not here as a punishment board. We just look at the facts in front of us. So we're just now deciding whether we would have approved something like this from the start or we wouldn't have approved something. If we wouldn't, he'd tear it down. If we would, he'll continue. So the fact that it started just usually is annoying to us to a certain level because we didn't get the comment on it from the ground up. Mr. Driver. Well said. Um, considering the size of the lot, I, I, I have to agree with my colleagues on that. On that I, I just don't see it Mr. McGee, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a large, <coughs> it's a large structure, right? And I think that's some of the complaints that we, well, we haven't heard any complaints here tonight, but none, of, none, of, nobody here lives in a bubble. Um, that being said, it's smaller than a garage would be if the applicant, well, if, <coughs> if he was building a garage, the applicant wouldn't be here because this meets or is underneath the criteria for a garage. So, as, as far as the size goes, that's not for us to determine as far as aesthetic. Um, it's a huge lot. It's, you know, 50, but it's more than 50 by 200. I think it's 50 by 205 if I read it right. Um, so, I don't think it's, it's an overbearing structure for the size of the property. Um, the forgiveness piece has already been discussed, so I don't see the need to be the dead issue. Um, as long as the conditions are met so far, I... Uh, I, I see myself leaning towards approval. Ms. McFadden? Um, yeah, it's, it's a big lot, and certainly there's no coverage issues. Um, my only, I guess my only problem is the height of it, and that it's directly adjacent to that fence by the parking lot, and the whole town can see that there's this huge structure, you know, going up there. Um, and that, that bothers me the most, because you, you certainly don't have otherwise any building coverage issues or anything like that. So, um... We're delivering, so you're done. Yeah. And I'm just done. like the other people, we're done. You're done. I'm done. done. I'd like to hear what Mr. Sponge just has to say. Yeah, uh, so f for the last time, I'm going to call it a shed. I'm calling it a shed because we need something in our ordinances to connect this to um, <coughs> and to make judgments on it. However, Playhouse, for all intent and purposes, is a undersized garage. Um, structure that you're choosing not to park cars in and have some, you know, play play area for your kids and stuff. If someone came before me and said on my big lot, I want to build a structure that I'm not going to put a cement floor in and I'm going to have it be a play lot, do I think that's a negative effect on this zone in this particular lot that's up against the commercial to the north, commercial to the east? You know, I don't know. I do see that you're going to see the structure, but if it was a garage back there, 
that could go to 16 foot high, people would see that it is. This one's only going to be at 12 foot 10, I think was the correct dimension. Um, so, you know, knowing that the building coverage is so low, the impervious coverage is so low, um, I also I made sure that I said to you multiple times that you heard the conditions because I do believe strongly that the condition that we put on it that this is the single accessory structure is a pretty restrictive one in the sense that there's no more buildings, there's no other little shed going on back there, there's no, you know, and people are going to be peering over your fence. I think you're well aware of that, right? So there's no other sheds going on back there, there's no garage going back there. So it's a restrictive covenant in the fact that in order to do anything else, it's going to come back for the board for reevaluation. So the fact that we're giving a structure that's oversized for what's considered a shed, but could be considered undersized for what would be a garage on a very large lot that doesn't even come near any kind of coverage issues, impervious issues, and the fact that you're using it a little differently, okay, go for it and have fun with your kids in your house that doesn't have electricity to it. <laughs> um, so don't go out there at night. It could be dangerous. Um, I don't see any issue with it. And again, I think we made it clear that, you know, in the future, if you ever have yes, projects yes. that you want to do, make sure you research it. And that goes to these other people who said they were completely befuddled by going to work one day and coming back to a full yard of papers. I think everyone needs to do their homework when they're doing projects. Ch um, Chairman, yes. just as you were commenting, I, I just wanted to note one uh, additional, I'll identify it as a condition, although it was really more of a representation which was that there would be no water, plumbing, heat, or electric uh, to the structure. Uh, so that would be identified as a condition. And also a, uh, a general condition that was uh, listed in the uh, board engineer's report uh, is that uh, if approved, uh, it be conditioned upon a final as-built survey to verify the setbacks and coverages. So before we yeah. go further, and this is a question for the engineer, I guess, more than anything. If we leave electric off of that list, and you decide just some time you want to put a 100 watt laptop I, I was going to recommend that you don't include electric because you can build a shed and keep electric in the sheds all the time. Uh, yeah, because uh, again, this is not this is what's going to carry with the land for a long time. I, I think it would be quite safer instead thing. of having perhaps candlelight or something to that effect. But all that being said, you would need to permit. Oh, yeah, yeah electric will permit to, to install. Electric, mm -hmm. yeah. as you would then. But I would All right, so the condition I'll the condition would just be no water, plumbing, or heat. I think that's smart for the next owner who would want to put a light bulb in their playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you I wasn't going to use it again. So you got everything, Ben? Yes. Wrapped up there? Yep. Uh, get a motion to close deliberations. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Get a motion with the stated conditions that were just read to us for approval of, uh, i got to call it it again because it's <laughs> official, a shed, the oversized shed. Yeah. Uh, get that motion. I'll make that motion. Motion by Vice Chair Reynolds, second by Mr. Driver, to approve application 2024-07 of Arthur and Caitlin Gant at 506 Kramer Avenue with conditions. Mr. Yes. Kelly. Mr. Kelly? He said yes. Oh, I didn't hear him. Maybe I heard him. Vice Chair Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Driver. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. Mr. McFadden. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. yes. Application approved. Have a good evening, Chairman. Board yeah. members. Thanks, Jeff. Nice well, thank to you. Thank you. The trees do blossom. You won't be able to see this one. Are there trees back here? Thank you.
Jackson. How are you? Sorry. Sorry. Please Sorry. proceed. Somebody Thank you. Good evening. Uh, John Jackson on behalf of Lisa Kent. Uh, we're here for a uh, house at 200 Washington. And um, I'm here this evening with, of course, uh, Ms. Kent as well as Matt Hockenberry. He is the engineer and planner, as well as Nick Hartman uh, from Seeka Design. Uh, he will be giving his testimony. Thank you. 
secretary uh, has sharpened his numbers a little bit, we don't have to ask for height variance. There's one asterisk next to that. One of the things that Mr. Savakul raised was the roof pitch. We can have a, uh, I think it's 6 over 12 on bed with numbers if you give us a one foot variance. So we can comply with the height variance with a uh, 5 point something over 12 roof pitch. If we go to 6, they, you know, we need an another foot to accomplish that. Mr. Hockenberry is going to testify that he doesn't think anyone looking at the street could see the difference in, in that type of, of roof pitch. His testimony is going to be that the intent of that ordinance probably uh, to uh, get away from flat roofs, the aesthetic of it, we think that we have an appropriate aesthetic as it is. Um, so that's basically a highlight of the overview. With that said, Mr. Hackenberry, uh, I'd like to have him sworn and give testimony regarding the application. with the firm MCH Engineering in Tom's River, uh, licensed professional engineer, licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I've owned uh, my You've firm. been before us yes. quite a few times. We accept the credentials. Thank you. Um, just really quick, uh, location-wise, this property is in the southeast corner of the intersection of Washington and Baltimore. Uh, as Mr. Jackson pointed out, it's also in the northeast corner of the Lake of Lilies. Uh, so it's one of the most unique properties in the borough uh, where we only have one adjoining neighbor. I tried to count throughout the borough. I came over maybe a dozen that are like this, where there's just one adjoining neighbor. Um, so Baltimore Avenue runs uh, along our east side. Washington is to, to the north. Um, the lake is to our south, and we're in the SF5 zone here. We have a 50-foot wide by 125-foot deep lot along Baltimore. Area is 6,250 square feet. Currently contains an existing two-story single-family dwelling. Uh, based on tax records, it looks like it was developed in the 20s, 1920s. Um, looks like it started out as a traditional cave, was modified over the years with additions, porches, decks. There is a detached garage located in the southeast portion. Uh, site coverage right now is lawn. We're in the grade range of elevation 5 and 6. Uh, there's a step in the house that so has two finished floor elevations. They're at roughly 7 and 8.5, and uh, which is well below the design flood elevation of 12 in this area. Uh, as it sits today, there's a number of existing nonconformities. I just want to point out that all of these will either be completely eliminated or significantly reduced. Uh, so we have a front <coughs> setback to Washington, 25 feet is required, 24.9 feet is existing, we're going to eliminate that. Front setback to Baltimore, 25 feet is required, we only have 7.3 feet uh, today, we're going to reduce that significantly. Do you mind just going up to the, the plan and we can look at it? I, I zoomed in on your plot plan. The edge of the house here is 7.3 feet from the uh, Baltimore Ave property line. We're going to significant, it's supposed to be 25 feet, we're going to uh, significantly increase that distance to that property line. So if we just take a quick look at the, the, of the uh, aerial photo, you can see that we're right up on the street, yes. as well as the uh, existing house. So there's a garage and a house that's right there. Yes, this photo shows it best. It's, it's relatively close to the street compared to most others. It's, it's probably closer than, uh, than a lot of other corner properties. Uh, we also have three feet to Baltimore Avenue for our detached garage, which is going to be completely el eliminated. Uh, 4.4 feet to the porch here. That's going to be completely eliminated, so those nonconformities are going away. Side setbacks, we have 4.2 feet to our neighbor here on the west. That nonconformity is going to be completely eliminated. And then uh, building coverage, we're over. We have 34.8% right now. 31% is permitted. Uh, actually, 30% because this house isn't elevated. So we're going to completely eliminate the block coverage and non-conformity. So um, can, can you just uh, show the board where the setbacks are on what we propose? I'll put your plot plan up there. Sure. So elevated two-story dwelling um, in the uh, northwest portion. So we're, we're staying as far away as we can from Baltimore. We're going to meet the setback along Washington Avenue. Uh, we have a two-story deck. That's going to be 25.3 feet, where 25 feet is required. So actually, the right side of the house is is back 29 feet, so it's, it's bumped back a little bit. Um, like many others, this is going to be elevated a full story above grade, so we're going to have garage, entry, storage on the ground floor. And that's evident from looking at the uh, rendering, so let's just go to the front rendering. And just describe so what we're about. Uh, garage door on the left side, we're going to have a paver driveway out to Washington Avenue. Uh, the curb cut is currently uh, over here to the, uh, to the west. There is an on-street parking space um, to the east. 
we're going to swap those. So we're not going to lose an on-street parking stall. We're going to um, we're going to keep an on-street parking stall. It's just going to be shifted to the west as we move the curb. But let me just ask a quick question. You, when you talk about the setback, you just talked about again the two double-story decking, and then in the beginning, Mr. Jackson said there's elimination of the. Uh, so I just want to clarify this deck. Um, we are at 236 square feet, as you see it here, with an upper story deck. 200 square feet is the limit, so 36 square feet over. What we're going to do is we're going to take this deck, and we're going to push this one back two and a half feet, and we will be under the 200 square foot requirement. We'll be at 199 square feet or so. So this deck will remain. It's just going to be pushed back two and a half feet, and that will eliminate the need for the variance for the 200 square foot. I misspoke about the limit. I've eliminated the variance. You did. And, and, and just just to clarify that, the way the ordinance reads is for upper story deck, which is defined as anything more than 15 feet above grade, it, it says decks. So so it, it's an aggregate. So, so that deck on the front of the house is not 236 square feet. It's whatever it is plus the deck that's on the other side of the house. So, but the way the ordinance reads, it's for di upper story decks can't be more than 200 square feet. So, so it's not like there's one huge deck that they're going to make smaller to conform to 200. There's a deck in the back that is how big? 140, 140 square feet, and then there was one in the front that was, you know, was 80 square feet or something. So, so that's where the relief comes from. So the board can certainly consider the fact that you're not just w looking at one larger deck, it's, it's really on opposite sides of the house. So, yeah, so essentially we, we had to add up the two decks that we have. We were at 236 square feet with those combined. Right. And so we felt no, it was no one deck is 10 by 20 or Correct. whatever. Correct. And we, we felt like um, that was somewhere where we could cut back. Um, so we did. We uh, are not going to request that variance. Um, so along the uh, Baltimore Avenue side, there's going to be a ground level door. Um, the applicant wanted the appearance of, uh, of an entryway on this side, and that's going to have a paper walkway out to the sidewalk. Um, you, can flip, you can start to see it here. So along the rear, we're going to have a uh, two-story elevated deck. Uh, let's take a look here. Right? Two-story elevated deck. On the east side, it's just going to be deck on deck. Uh, on the west side, obviously, you have an elevated first floor deck. Then you have an extension of the second floor. That's going to be a master bedroom that extends out over this elevated first floor deck, and then on the second story deck on the right side, we have a spiral staircase that goes up to a rooftop deck. Uh, as far as the rooftop deck, as Mr. Jackson uh, alluded to, we need a five foot setback between the edge of the deck, uh, or between the edge of the, the dwelling and the start of the deck. Uh, we're going to take this rail and basically bump it in two feet, um, put a decorative roof on it, so that while we still need a variance for, uh, for not meeting the five foot, we're improving upon what we now have, which is uh, zero feet for those. Just, you know, what, what is the beauty of having that deck right there in terms of our location and what's around us? I know the board knows, but just for purposes. It's obviously the lakefront view um, to the south. Uh, I just want to point out, I think it's important. Uh, if you could go back to the right there. Um, just the, the view that shows from that. So you can't get to this deck, um, and, and uh, Nick will kind of share the floor plan with you momentarily, but you can't get to this deck or this deck from anywhere but the master bedroom. So it's not an extension of the living space. It's not um, some, they're having a party and the overflow is out on the deck um, overlooking the lake. This is only from the master bedroom. It's really for the applicant to go out there and have a cup of coffee in the morning and look out. And, and we can just take a quick look to the, uh, to the floor plans just to... Uh, uh, one again, so this is master bedroom, master bath, and here's the door to that second floor deck, and then the spiral staircase that goes up to the rooftop of the garden. Um, so let's talk about the, you know, oh, the you want to go through route line up there? Sure, I just want to, show, um, the mechanicals are going to be reloaded, are going to be located in a compliant location. They're going to be on the roof, uh, on the west side. The elevation, so just um, tuck them in here so that they're compliant. Um, How's that access? Uh, that's access through a, a small uh, hatch, access hatch in the attic. So it's not um, not somewhere that you can 
you can get to. It's just needs to be serviced. Uh, these are three, I think it's three foot by three foot access panel from the attic in case there's a, an issue. Let's see. Oh, uh, from a site standpoint, have a six foot fence in the rear yard but once it become, comes forward of the back of the house it becomes again the front yard and only a three foot fence is required. Uh, the corner permitted. Permitted. Into that, right? right. Yeah. So three feet is permitted we're asking for an additional foot. Well we have to get an additional foot to make it a pool fence because there's a pool in the backyard that's required by code to have four foot. So. And the part of the back of the property that they're coming past is that upper addition to yes, the that, that bedroom, is, right? That is correct. So my client would prefer to have a six foot fence if the board does not have an issue with that, but we thought four was closer with the ordinance requires and includes. So Jay, it's not just, I just wanted, even on a corner lot, you can do six foot up to the back of the house. Right. 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 It's just that the back of the house, we don't see it in this view, but, it's but the back of the house is that bump out of the bedroom. Right. So the fence comes past right. that. Well, it's such an open area. Well, I, I think I, just to clarify, I think what you're saying is if we started the fence from here back, we could have six foot? That is correct. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah, I think the, that, that would be what the applicant would, would be looking for, I think. But a six foot fence. Well, you have so to close the backyard, though, with four feet. Don't forget that. We, we do. I think, um, well, I guess we would, we would ask for the relief today for this portion of four foot fence, um, knowing that if the applicant came in and moved it to here, they could go with a six foot fence. Or you could ask for the six, what you want to do with the four. Yeah, I mean, for safety reasons, I don't see why you shouldn't ask for six. It's a we for six. Yeah, we would ask for six feet for, the, for this I'm portion. Of that. Uh, because of where the lot is, I think the four foot is, isn't enough. Is better. Yeah. Oh, it's better. Well, you, you, it's a lake. It's 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 the public lake. It's six foot fence is going to block a lot of view, in my opinion. Everybody he works with loves it too. <laughs> yes. I also want to point out this this dash line here represents a recharge system. So we're basically wrapping the western <coughs> and southerly property line, property line with a recharge system. We put it between us and our neighbor. Uh, all the roof leaders are going to be directed there. It was sized in accordance with the uh, ordinance requirements. Um, we actually put a uh, the overflow for this system on the days where we get those cloudbursts, rains, and it overflows and overwhelms the system. It's going to bubble into the, the lake property and not towards the neighbor. So um, right now there is a lot coverage issue and no recharge system. We think that we're improving the situation by uh, eliminating that lot coverage issue and uh, introducing a recharge system. Um, so just from a planning standpoint, the uh, front yard variance to Baltimore, again, 25 feet is required, 13.3 is proposed. So we're eliminating the three-foot non-conforming for the garage, 
4.4 for the masonry porch, and uh, we have 7.3 for the dwelling out. So we're improving it by uh, six feet. And I just want to point out that's measured to this bump out here. The majority of the uh, structure is at 15.3 feet. So we're, we need the variance for 13.3, but a lot of our structure is uh, actually set back two feet. I did look at the houses that would be um, to the north on the same side of Baltimore. Measured them. I can't see their property lines, but I measured them from the curb. Um, they were 20 feet and 22 feet from the curb. We're going to be 25 feet from the curb. So as you drive south on Baltimore, we're going to be improving the setback along uh, along Baltimore relative to our neighbors. So that bump out that you're describing in the picture up there, that's right above the door. So that's for to get some relief and some rather to break up the, the elevation. Yeah. Um, and again, so as you go with that, I'm just going to say. I, you know, doing this a long, long, long time, I've kind of learned where I get burnt a little bit. And with all due respect to Mr. Jackson's aesthetics and my aesthetics, I'm not necessarily agreeing that this isn't boxy. And I don't believe, in my view, that the 85% rule is an intensity rule at all. I think it's strictly an aesthetic we're not, we're not asking people to have 15% less upper floors to bring down the use of the house any, right? They're still going to be able to do the same things. I think you do that because it really does bring some dimensionality to it. Here, we're saying that a little one-foot bump out or two foot, whatever it is, 18-inch bump out, and I'm not saying there, this front elevation is a different because of but the side elevation and kind of the way I look at this, especially, this is my opinion again. So I, I'm, I'm saying this as in, in the form, I'll, I'll turn it into a question for you, but right now I'm seeing it as a little boxy. And then with these under-pitched roofs that aren't really at the 612 or whatever, it's just kind of seeming like we, we have a box and then we're sticking these little things on top and we're calling it a house, right? So I'm struggling with the fact that we did a new design and we're that far over, not 85% again, like the paper people, not at 92%, not at, you know, 88%. We're at 109, I think was the number, is that where we are? It's 103.1, I uh, confirmed with Mr. Sample the way that we calculated it in our, our plan was incorrect, so it's 103. Okay, so we came down a little bit just on our math. Right. So I'm looking to hear of what potential, from my perspective, uh, to address that a little more than saying we have a bump out on the side of the house. I don't know if any other board members agree. Um, that's where I'm at. So I'm looking for you to address the 85% rule a more, Mr. Jackson. Okay. So, you know, obviously your aesthetic is the aesthetic. Yep. But we do have other elements in here. Mr. Hockenberry can address them, but you know, we have the roof elements, lots of windows, we have the overhang over the door. This does come out another couple of feet, and in the back, we certainly uh, and, oh, and your, your comment about the roof if we have the relief for one foot for height, we can get the six over 12 roof. So, in a flood zone, that's not that unusual to have parking underneath as well uh, when we don't have a um, you know, so habitable attic. So right. can, can you explain that? Because I already so, so I already have a variance for height required, and if you're going to make a 6 on 12, how, does, how do you stay in compliance? I can elaborate on that. So what we did was I lowered, uh, I had raised grade um, pretty, pretty good here, so we're going to lower the garage slab. We have a few, uh, few inches there. Um, and then we had 9 foot ceilings on the lower level. We don't need 9 foot ceilings to get a 7 foot overhead to work, which is standard. So we essentially lowered the house, crunched it, uh, the 1.3 feet that we were over. Um, so we're right there with a 5 on 12 pitch. Uh, so when we go to 6 on 12, it adds about a foot to the overall structure. So that's, that's um, kind of the math to where Mr. Jackson is going. So, Ray, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jay. No, I'm just going to add that's recorded somewhere, right? I mean, because had he not said that, and we just approved it, it didn't have to squish anything. Well, is it in your latest drawings or the drawings Our changed? Our latest drawings was seeking a, a height variance, so part of my testimony here today was to uh, was to come here and say, look, we can avoid a height variance. Um, but because we need the roof pitch, I think 
this was actually one I wanted to say that, well, if you can get the roof pitch, then we do need a height variance again. So, uh, so what I was going to follow up with you on the roof pitch, this, this isn't necessarily fixing my box yet, but from your experience, does the 6 on 12 versus 5 on 12, there was a statement made earlier that people wouldn't be able to definitively <coughs> make notice that from the ground or whatever, but as you're approaching the house on the street and a car coming up to it, do you think that's a, a difference that's worth exploring in terms of the one foot variance, or do you think it is what it is? And I, I, so I would say that the difference between a 5 on 12 and a 6 on 12 pitch is not particularly demonstrable. The difference between, you know, 3 on or 4 on, I would say you, you do notice that. Now certainly when you look at the perspectives, you can tell it's not a 8 on 12 or a 12 on 12 or a gambrel or anything like that. So, so certainly they're not s steep pitched, but given the ordinance limitation or requirement for 6 on 12, I would have I would probably more tend to agree with Mr. Hockenberry that six on twelve to five on twelve is probably not particularly noticeable. Is there an engineering or some type of reason for the an ordinance against the five on twelve? I mean I that's maybe just the number they picked. Another uh, another town I work in has a minimum minimum slope of five on twelve. Generally speaking, a four on twelve is starting to get towards the limitation of a standard asphalt shingle so that you could get ice damming if it's any shallower than that so usually you never have an asphalt roof less than 4 on 12. Um, but, it, but it's really, as Mr. Strunk just said, to limit the limit that whole flat roof area because, because you have a height limitation but the, the height limitation as we do measure to the peak of the roof so if you don't have any peak well then you have that much more mass you know that much taller, so that that's the whole requirement for the for the sloped roof. Okay. But I think otherwise six on twelve to five on twelve. I, I think that was I wouldn't call it arbitrary, but but that's just but the number so that was slight. The way this worked for me is if there was a fifteen percent reduction in that second floor, would we be moving to? right pitch roof anyway because now we would have less mass that we're trying to land a roof on, right? So that's where it starts to get complicated because to the point you just made, <laughs> the bigger the mass, the flatter the roof, the bigger the mass we can go, right? So that's where I'm saying if this thing was all of a sudden in the way it was supposed to be a few feet, now is that roof pitch change? Yeah, certainly, certainly when you're spanning whatever you want to span at, at your limited slope, the closer those two num the closer those two walls are, you can maintain the same height with a steeper pitch roof. See, I, I so knew I figured that all <laughs> out. <laughs> so, Mr. Bridges, yeah, but but what's unique about this house, and I, I think this is a complying house to the spirit and the intent, because the reason why we're over is this feature in the back, which is the you know that is Mrs. Miss Kent's like the, the the whole rest of the house is. You take out the square footage of this bedroom, and we comply almost with the 85 percent. Mr. Hockenberry will describe that. So when, when I, I, I think the numbers, what you're looking at in the front and around the back, this is a compliant house with the 85 percent rule because we do have balconies and porches, and we do have outdoor space, and we have roof overhangs, etc. So I, I mean, this, I, I don't like to uh, disagree with Mr. Structures because I know how that usually works out. But I would submit that this is a, a textbook house that meets the 85 percent rule, but for that feature in the back, which is what, such an essential thing to Mrs. Kent. Ms. Kent, I'm sorry. And I don't know. So, Matt, you want to do that so it's not from attorney argument, but an engineering? Uh, yeah, that is what's driving it. So that's what makes our second floor footprint larger than our first floor footprint, which puts us over 100 percent, uh, at 103 percent. So uh, if you go to the front. So your your. 14 foot 9 inch by I would say approximately 10. 10. 10. Yes, that that extension off the back is what's dri is what's really driving. It makes our second floor larger than our first floor. Um, and and ironically, I would argue that that in the back gives a, a dimension and a feature to this house that it takes away any it takes boxes. 
So, and go ahead, man. Those are the views I get a little nervous on because I've, I've, I've just seen what happened. I'm sorry? The street view? Yes, I can. I'm, let's go to the street view. Hold on. So, let's get my bearings back here. Right this is my first one. Right here. Porches. Right Across the street. Yeah, it's a Oh, okay. Where do you want to go? Can we get some dram on me? Sometimes that's enough of a thing for me to say yeah, I'm going to get over it, sure. and then no, but maybe I, I want to hear. Close. <laughs> no, I, you did. No, I did you did on. just say it was close. I asked them directly, and I got a no. So maybe do you have that number? Or? I do have that number. Um, nine, like nine point eight, something like that. I just 
um, I don't, I don't have it comes off. Can you, can you just say a couple of minutes? Uh, yeah. I'll come
us with the questions of our engineer or planner. Uh, Does the board have any other questions of the engineer or planner? Does anyone in the audience have any questions of the engineer or planner? If I could have Mr. Hartman come up. Yeah. So when he came in 99, I thought he was underselling it. So, so I would. So you're agreeing that yep. 93.4 yeah. is about right. So yep. that is better. Okay, go ahead. The materials and uh, construction types will that match the rendering? And can you just tell us what those materials and construction types would be? Very brief. Yeah. So as of right now, this is the plan for the materials and the construction that we would be utilizing in this project. Um, if you'd like me to go into, for example, the siding we would be using. Would be Cedar impressions, <coughs> double seven, uh, polypropylene siding. Um, you've probably seen that on a lot of houses in Point Beach. It's very popular. It's that cedar shake siding with, uh, in this case, blue color to it. Um, as far as our roofing shingles go, we would be using uh, GAF HDZ architectural roof shingles. They do give a little more depth to them than your standard roof asphalt roof shingle. Um, as far as our windows, we'd be going with a white window, just like you're seeing here, with grills as shown. This is a, obviously a prefab. It's already it's a prefab house, right? You're going to bring it's in a just modular home. Modular yes. home. Okay. Are, are there ways that the rooms could be made smaller, or is it already a set size? No. So this is a 100% custom home. Uh, our company actually pretty much these days only does 100% custom design homes. So we do have uh, full power over the design of the home. All right. Within to, reason of comfort. To address Mr. Scrunch's concerns, and I I, I agree. <coughs> The 103 originally is, I know, I'm not necessarily a, agree with the town's ordinance of 85%. I understand why they wanted it, and they have it there for a reason. I don't necessarily agree with it all the time, but that's a big difference. So if, and I hate, and it's one, I've said it here a million times, I hate 
redesigning people's projects because I complain about that, but I'm going to do a little of that right now. Um, instead of eliminating the nine feet or so that Mr. Scrunch just said in that back room, <coughs> how about if that was removed like seven feet and you took a foot or two off the two bedrooms that are in the front of the house? That would still make them decent sized bedrooms. Would that get you down to lower 90s maybe? Or high 80s? Might have to use the math there for you. Okay. But you know, instead of, instead of eliminate that big section off the back, instead of nine feet or whatever it is, make it like six feet. So the room's still a good size, but if you grab the foot off for each room up front, that would make up the difference. And I, and I just want to be clear, I wasn't asking for him to, to remove it. I was asking if it was removed, right? because then I would know that the rest of the house was at a certain level, because that kind of is, to Mr. Jackson's point, something that gives some bump out in dimensionality to the house. But the fact that the rest of it was yeah, at the 100, then the 99, then the now, you're now 93, we're still over by 8% in so, I think, can you answer that question? Uh, could I just get the question restated just so I understand exactly? If I can remember it. Uh, <laughs> the front two bedrooms. The front two bedrooms. So you got their, uh, what, 10 by 6 and 13 and change. If they got moved in a foot each, and instead of taking that whole back off, like the 9 feet, if that was only, like, took it in 6 feet, they would still leave that number 5 bedroom, making it still a nice size bedroom. And the ones in the front wouldn't be made so small where they wouldn't be appropriate for you know, the size of a family. So I just wondered if you could take a little bit of both instead of just one big section in the back to get it real closer. As long as my client's in agreement, that's something we can certainly look into. If I only took, uh, let's call it, uh, use it six feet off the back and two, uh, one foot, let's say, off the front for each, um, as opposed to taking 10 feet off the back, I just want to clarify that our percentage would be a little higher than the 93%. We okay. wouldn't uh, quite get us lower than that 93%, but it's something that we could, of course, look into. And I would just need to confirm uh, that that would meet my client's needs. I'm not bothering that. If we're over 93% now, we're probably reducing it, bring us over the 93 Yeah, I was So the 93%. The 93, 93 was if he chopped off the whole back. That's yeah. correct. Oh, the whole back. Okay. Now he's talking, yeah. And now we're just we're discussing maybe chopping just a little bit off the back, about maybe six feet, and then taking some off the front as well. But if the total area doesn't add up to as much as that, which uh, it's 10 by 14 nines, it gives you about 147 and a half. And I was never talking about taking off that back section. I was just talking about that's what it did to it. So you can kind of look at that since it's it's projecting out. It doesn't. It, it gives more dimension to this. Yeah, well, I understand that. But uh, to address Mr. Reynolds' part, to the rooftop deck, while you might have nice neighbors now, or that people want to move in this house, maybe very nice. You get someone that it's fine right into the neighbor's yard. I, where I mean, just I mean, the deck alone on the back, that's the second floor deck on the back, is blocked and it can't see over that area. You know, it's a little uh, intrusive, I think. We, we would eliminate that. But. Let's go on. And yeah, this is gone. But like I said, the town has an 85% ordinance. Like I said, they have it for a reason. Like I said, I don't always agree with it, but. <coughs> Chairman said you were way over. You know, and it's a new house. It isn't like you're working with an old house that you're trying to figure it out. This is brand new. You should be able to you should be able to meet it. Well it's also a new house on a corner lot where we have to take uh, you know instead of having a five foot setback on the side door, we have to, it's, it's it makes it a lot more complicated. And then we're also trying to lift it to get parking underneath. Um, so it so that arc, that arc, I understand that, but there, the other argument would be, well, you, you could build a smaller house too. Um, but that wouldn't affect the proportionality, and I, you know, I, I have a hard time understanding how this is a boxy and an unattractive house. I, I just, I don't think it's unattractive. I just, we have an ordinance, and I kind of play by the rules a little bit, and, that, and it isn't over by a little bit. It's over by a lot. You know, that's what I'm looking at, and that's what I guess. Yeah, I, I, we, we look at it differently, that's all. I think it is a little boxy. The front elevation is not. It's got two decks on it, whatever. I think it's just this. And oh, a, a lot of that elevation. 
Decrease the second floor or increase the first upper. floor. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, the, when I first looked at, before looking at the renderings, and I, I first got the package and I looked at the, the 109% or whatever, I said, what the heck is this thing going to look like? A picture of Dr. Seuss. Like, and, and that's not what we're looking at because it's it's just that bump out on, on top of that's part of the second floor. That, that is the third or first floor. So, that's, that's where my head was. Um, it looks a lot less oblique, I guess is the word, than, than I thought it was going to. So, so what you're saying is that first floor, if they were pulled all the way out and made it a solid room there, then the, you would have probably 85% up top. I don't know if it would be 85%, it would be closer to closer, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So in other words, instead of taking things away, might be able to add something. You would take away the bottom th deck, that's all. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's an important deck, I think, for yeah. living purposes. Jay, did you have something you were going to say about the corner or not? Or no? No, I uh, answered it in my head when you guys were talking. Okay. And I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just working through things. Does through anyone that. else have any <coughs> questions of the builder? Uh, I had a question, although it might be more for Mr. Hockenberry. Off street parking, how many uh, off street parking spaces are uh, proposed? I think that's going to be more for Matt. So we have uh, one in the garage, uh, one. That fits within our property boundary here, so we have two off street parking stalls, and then we, we can fit a third between the sidewalk, but it extends over the property line here. So two, 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 compl two compliant and uh, functional third. Yes, I did. I did run the numbers just on the topic that you just brought up. If you pull up this the rear elevation, ninety three point eight. So if you if you added this and filled this in with living oh, space, well. the number would go to like eighty six percent. Um, with what we have. I don't know that that is an improvement aesthetically yeah, no. on, your, on your boxy look. So I, don't just, I was just referring to the piece under under that bump out. Yeah, sure. I, close bump out. I guess what I want to just point out is so, sometimes that 86, 85, like we would be closer to compliance with a number, but it wouldn't really solve a bo the boxiness issue. It wouldn't change the look of the house yep. if we did that or not. I hear you loud and clear. So uh, 
And just to change topics or just to go back, so Mr. Jackson, you would eliminate the rooftop deck and then put a typical gable roof on, on the top of that. Roofs are of my favorite. Start scrolling through your computer quickly and rapidly. <laughs> if you could. Did somebody get their question answered about the parking? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Just wanted to make sure. I didn't hear it, so I just wanted to make sure. Just because you're commenting, you just got to get sworn in real quick. Really nice. 
nice job in putting it there. Uh, mine is the nondescript house uh, immediately adjacent to it. They didn't give me any windows, but that's okay. Um, and so, again, I, I, I would be really, really happy if, um, if that was approved. Thank you. Anyone else? That six foot fence or not? Uh, anybody have want to talk about that? Yes, yeah, Lisa told me that that would be a lot better in the back for the, for the pool. And everything. So uh, yeah, I don't want someone. You don't want someone hopping over. So the variance on pool. the six foot is where it comes past the bump out. Then it would have to be four foot. So we need the variance for the four foot for the house to make it and close in pool fence. I thought you just asked for a six foot fence. No, it, it doesn't have to be four foot to be a pool fence. It could be six. Foot. Oh yeah, six feet. I, I thought Matt had. thing I think that was kind of left up in the air to some degree was um, as submitted there was a height variance required there was an indication that the height variance has been eliminated and then there was a comment that there would be a necessity for a height variance to achieve a 6 on 12 roof if the board saw fit to have a 6 on 12 I think with your explanation of the difference between the two we're good with the 5 by So, Mr. Hockenberry, that's correct, right? Is yes. that with a 5 on 12 roof, with the changes that have been made, losing the 9 foot on the first floor and squeezing it down a little bit, it does not need a height variance? Correct. We can comply with it. If we do leave that front, uh, the second story of that balcony, we would need relief for 236 square feet, yeah. where 200 feet is permitted for an upper story deck. Um, then the cedar impression. the rooftop deck and, and add a typical gear roof. Whatever that was, uh, 4A, the alternative roof, gable roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a condition that they would provide a landscape plan that would be subject to the review and approval of the board engineer. Uh, there were a couple items in the engineer's report which I believe were agreeable, but I, just to be clear, uh, the curb cut relocation will be subject to the governing body approval. Uh, curb and sidewalk to the property line as indicated in paragraph 11 of the engineer's report uh, and lastly uh, the issue related to any possible wetlands permits uh, either conditioned upon the permits or a letter of no interest if none are uh, necessary. Get a motion to close for deliberations if no one on the board has any other questions. So moved. Second. All right. Yeah, I uh, Looking at this front view of the 
home, at my home, and I was very upset because it was a flat front view. You didn't see any of the setbacks. You didn't see any of the sidebar on the side. Uh, and until we saw this tonight, uh, quite frankly, I was all disappointed. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see what was what's being done here. Uh, I will say that the bump out, if, it, if the, uh, <coughs> in perspective, if the horizon line wasn't on uh, point um, perspective here, that bump out would be much more apparent on the uh, on the outside on the uh, Boston side of the uh, the house. That would be much more apparent in that particular view. Uh, I like the color of the house. I like the way it sets up there. I know. Uh, one of my concerns in that area are uh, flooding. When we had a uh, and, and, uh, when we had a uh, Sandy, uh, one of my relatives or one of my uh, neighbors came down the street in a canoe and, and canoed right across the intersection of St. Louis and Washington uh, with a canoe. Uh, the water was about almost three feet there. The water at this street, at this end, the water was about a foot and a half from the lake. So the flooding on this particular area is not as bad, but yet it's been addressed tonight here and throughout that particular area quite well. I, I have no objection to this at all tonight. Okay, when I first saw this, I was very concerned about the 109, 103, whatever it was, uh, for the second floor. Uh, but I was very impressed with the reduction in the front, back, and side yard setbacks. You made a, just to do like a full, you did quite a bit all the way around. So that gave more room all around that house, and that was, that was pretty impressive. Um, I still have a problem with the second floor being so much bigger than the 85% rule. But with all the overhangs, the bump outs, uh, and, the, and the balconies, I mean, it's it's a beautiful house. I, I can't you know I can't say anything wrong with it. But I, I, at this point, I, I would not have a problem with it because it, it fits into the neighborhood. It's a flood compliant house. Neighbors aren't complaining. I'm glad the, the um, rooftop deck is. Eliminated because I always have a funny feeling about spying into other people's yards. It can get creepy if some other people start moving in there. So, um, other than that, it's a beautiful home. You did a lot of uh, re reductions on the setbacks, and it looks pretty good to me. Mr. Reynolds. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a good looking home. Um, <coughs> just for a fellow board member, my, my interpretation or my thought process for the reasoning for the 85% rule was when we were doing a lot of homes in tight areas, tight yards, like the bungalow district in that area. I believe that that's what drove that 85% rule. In an open area like this, a lake opening, it, it's not bothering me a bit, and, and I do. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I'm glad we're going to keep the big porch. I think cutting that porch would have would have hurt the, the front view of the house. And, and like was said that back deck that it, it wasn't going to be used and it, it really took away. The minute you showed the picture with the gable, I mean that just changed the back of that house. So I'm, I'm looking favorable right now. Mr. Driver? Well, uh, I wouldn't have supported it um, if that upper, that rooftop deck was still there. I, 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 I just, I agree with Mr. Dixon that think that, that 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 was too much but I like the look of it uh, you know with that being eliminated um, I, I it always bothers me when when we uh, kind of push an ordinance aside and say well you know this is what the ordinance says but uh, I don't know sometimes I think there are too many buts but I'll land one anyway. It is a nice looking building, and, and uh, obviously, if the neighbors don't care um, and they support it, why should I not support it? Mr. McGee? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm inclined to.
to agree with Vice Chair Reynolds um, on, a couple, on a couple of things, uh, including the keeping the, the, the top deck where it was. I'm also inclined to agree that I think the spirit of the ordinance is for more compact lots as opposed to something like this where we're going 500 yards back until we see another home and it's on a corner lot so it's not on top of another house next to it. Um, I think I think that probably is the spirit of the ordinance. Um, I also agree with Mr. Dixon um, that rooftop decks are potentially seriously creepy. Um, so I would not have supported it if it were there. Um, and so beyond that, I, I have no problem with the property laws. Mr. McFadden? Um, as usual, it's all, it's all been said by the time it gets to me. I think uh, Mr. Dixon and Mr. Reynolds said it best. Um, for me, I agree with everything they said. I knew the person who lived in the, the last lived in that house, um, and this, I hate to say it, but it's a great improvement on the house that she was in. Um, certainly we're getting a more compliant home, so from a flood <coughs> perspective, it's a safer home with all the new electric and everything, the upgrades that'll go into a new home and, and, and being built that way, it's all better from a safety perspective. Um, I, again, I've been struggling a little bit with uh, what I believe the 85% rule. And do I think it's just a bungalow rule? No, I think it is something that stops from just creating a lot of mass in the constructions of home. I'm not saying that this is fully there, but I am shouting out over the wall to someone who happens to represent a lot of cases at Point Pleasant Beach of don't get in the habit of coming in at over 85% all the time on everything that he brings in. I don't know who that might be, Mr. Jackson. Um, because, you know, again, it is that situation where it is a new house and you're, you can meet certain things. To Mr. Kelly's point, you're here seeking relief on that. Um, so from a static point of view, it didn't sway me enough that I wouldn't approve this for all the benefits that it gives. Certainly the, the neighbors that all live in this area support it. Um, and there are a lot of things that add aesthetic value to it. So uh, with the conditions that have been cited, um, I'll be in favor as well. Get a motion to close deliberations. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, get a motion. He read them before we did it, so I think we're good. We get a uh, motion with conditions for approval. So I'll make the motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Dixon, second by Mr. McGee to approve application 2025 05 the Lakefront Holdings LLC to under Washington Avenue with conditions. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Vice Chair Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Driver? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mr. Fadden? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes